Hey guys, the exams are creeping up on us and we now have three months left to go until they start. Um, if you're good at your 30-ish timetables, that is less than 100 days. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. That is really scary. So here's what you should be doing with three months left to go. In the last video, I talked about preparing stuff, getting stuff sorted, getting all your past papers printed out, getting the spec printed out so you know what to revise. In this one, we are going to start to talk about how you can use everything that you've prepared, how you can use the trialing of the revision techniques to properly kickstart your revision now, because this is roughly the time that you should be kickstarting your revision. So all of those past papers that you've printed off, schedule them in for maybe maybe once a week at the moment. You don't have to go over the top, you don't have to kill yourself trying to do them every single day, but once a week we need to be trying them. And you need to be looking at the mark schemes. Now you can get somebody else to mark these for you if you want to, but it's gonna be really, really good if you can mark these yourselves actually look at the mark schemes and see where you lost the marks because this is what the examiner is going to be using when they decide whether your answer is worth the marks or not so look at what the mark schemes are saying look at what the examiners are seeing when they mark papers do you think your answer would get that mark or do you think your answer wouldn't get that mark? And then write yourself a list of stuff that you got wrong. Keep a note of the questions that you did really, really well on and keep a note of the questions that you didn't do quite so well on. And don't throw that paper away because I want you to be doing it again. Yep, I want you to do the same paper again. And I don't mean the next day, I mean maybe in like a month's time, maybe in two months time. Do the same paper again and then compare the result that you got this weekend with the result that you get in maybe two months time when we're closer to the exams. Did you manage to improve upon the bits that you got wrong the first time round and have you fixed any problems? If the same problems keep coming up over and over again when you do a paper week after week after week, then you know that's an area that you really, really need to focus on. However, if it's just a little blip, you see it in one paper, you look at the mark scheme, you check it, and you get it right in the next paper, where the same question comes up or a very, very similar question comes up, then that's brilliant. That is literally the whole point of revision. Looking something up in a textbook or a video, testing yourself on it with some questions, marking the questions, see where you can prove, and then doing another set of questions to check that you've made those improvements. That is literally exactly what you should be doing. Now I've said this before and I know all teachers will not agree with me, in fact some teachers will actively hate me for saying this, but not all subjects are as important as others. For A-levels your university offers might depend on you getting a certain grade in a certain subject and that's really really important if you want to take up an offer. For GCSE we have to be getting those grades in English, we have to be getting those grades in maths, and then GCSE anything that you want to take further so anything that you want to take for a level those ones are also more important i know at gcse you could be taking 8 9 10 11 12 subjects even and that's a lot of subjects in five years time nobody is gonna not give you a job because you didn't put your 13th gcse on the form unless that was like maths or something now I know in my case I took two languages at GCSE, I took French and German. If however I didn't put both of those on an application form, well I've still got one language on there. So in my personal circumstance something like my second German, which was my third language by that point, that necessarily didn't require as much revision time as science which I knew I wanted to take for A level. So you've got to work out how best to spend your time and how best to prioritise the limited time we have before your exams so that you're making the best use of this. And if you haven't done so already, make yourself a timetable based upon this. Make sure you give your high priority subjects more time and your low priority subjects less time. Remember, it is so, so important that you keep prioritising time 
for your mental health. We do not want to get to the summer holidays and you have spent the last three months literally just shut in your bedroom, not talking to anybody, really, not doing anything. That is really, really not going to be good for you. Think about maybe ways you can incorporate studying into things that are good for you. So you can study with friends. Yes, I know this is not necessarily what everyone's always been telling you, but you can study with friends. It has to be the right kind of friend though. We don't want to be studying with somebody who's really, really negative. We don't want to be studying with somebody who stays up all hours and then makes you feel bad because you didn't stay up to three o'clock in the morning or rising. And it is a really bad idea to stay up to three o'clock in the morning or rising. It is so, so important that you are getting your sleep. And I do mean going upstairs at 9.30, leaving your phone downstairs, taking a book and a cup of tea upstairs, sitting in bed reading half an hour before going to sleep at 10. Yes, I know. I know you're not going to like this. But it is a really good idea. It's really good for your vision. It's really good for your mental health. And it's only the next three months. Some other days, you can go crazy. Okay. When you're thinking about providing with friends, make sure it's somebody that you get along with, so you've got the positive social interaction going on there. Make sure it's somebody that you're on the same wavelength with. So don't make it somebody who's got a much higher target grade, don't maybe make it someone that's doing a different tier paper to you. Make it somebody who you are very, very comparable with. Otherwise it's going to lead to feelings of insecurity, um, somebody wanting to do something that maybe you don't need to do if you're on the foundation paper and down the higher paper so make sure it's somebody that you work well with and you're working towards the same goal together with and then one of the things you can do is divide up topics so your friend could go away and make flashcards on this topic and you can go away and write flashcards on this topic and then you can swap flashcards so you can maybe like every week each person make a set of flashcards and you can rotate them round. So every week you get a different set of flashcards to practice, every week you make a set of flashcards which gets passed on. So this gives you the advantage of not doing the same thing over and over again, giving you fresh things, but you don't have to spend time making all of the flashcards because you've divided up the work between two, three, four, I don't generally think groups of five are very good ideas for this because it does just, just descend into gossip and chaos. So you keep it at a group of two, three or four people and you can divide up the work. You can also divide up making mind maps and then you can photocopy them, share them around. You can divide up learning a subject and then start teaching it to the rest of the group if it's something that you really, really don't understand. So that's a way you can positively affect your mental health. So you've got this positive social interaction, you're spending time with your friends, a little bit of gossip, maybe pop down Costa and have a nice coffee while you're doing it. That's a really good thing for you but you're also revising and improving your grade at the same time. And then the last thing I want you to spend a little bit of time doing is daydreaming. Thinking about the summer. Thinking about all those fantastic, wonderful things you're going to be doing over the summer. Um, going down the beats with your friends, um, getting on a train and getting like a, a group discount ticket and going to the end of the line and seeing what's there. Uh, popping into London and getting a really, really cheap ticket for a show. There are loads of shows you can go and see and sit at the back for a tenner and it's brilliant. Um, just start daydreaming about what you're going to do. Only in limited amounts because we do need to spend some time studying and we can't spend the whole time daydreaming about what we're going to do. But you can make yourself a Pinterest board, you can start saving photos on your phone, you can actually get a pin board and start pinning things to it if you want to physically get involved in cutting stuff out of magazines. Start thinking about all the positive, brilliant, fantastic things you're going to be doing over the summer after all of these exams are over. So we have three months left to go guys, um, I am busy producing as much stuff as I can for you, I am going to be here with you every single step of the way and together we can do this.